inking or drawing freestyle in PowerPoint has been around for quite a while, ever since PowerPoint 2013. But since I'm not too great at drawing, this wasn't something I typically used. However, they've recently added a feature to PowerPoint 365, the latest version, that I wanted to show you since it's another thing to add to your animation toolkit. And that is the ability to not only draw or write things, but actually use the replay of the drawing as a regular animation on the timeline, which you can then sequence with your other animations, as well as change all of the same timing settings that you normally would. So all you have to do is go to the drawing tab, then click draw with touch, and then go ahead and make your drawing using one of the pens here. And by the way, you can customize these as you like. And you can also use the ruler here for greater precision if you want. After you're done, just go to the animations tab and choose ink replay or rewind here. Super cool and super easy. And of course, the advantage of using inked text with an ink replay animation versus a standard wipe animation is that the effect is much more realistic. To compare, here's a normal wipe animation on text, which is what I used for my wiggly text effect video. This already took quite a while to do and set up properly, and it's not even fully realistic since the wipe doesn't animate the individual letter strokes. However, this text animation done with the ink replay is much more seamless and better looking. So that's essentially what it is and how to use it. And to finish off this tutorial, I have three tips for maximizing the effectiveness of this feature. Tip number one is don't be shy to use templates for both text and pictures. For example, when I wrote this out in PowerPoint, I actually used a text box behind it to use as a guide while I was doing it. So this was because I just wanted to make sure that all of the letters were evenly spaced and where I wanted them to be. But if you have really good handwriting and you're always really good about getting into the right space, then you may not need to do it. But for me, it was super, super helpful. Similarly, when I wanted to draw the light bulb, I actually went to freepick.com and found this drawing of a light bulb, and then I put this on the slide and then sort of drew on top of it. So that way I was able to use this as a template. Tip number two is to adjust your ink groupings. So when you're finished writing out your text or making your image, for example, you have to just kind of look at all the groupings that PowerPoint has naturally done. So just go through and make sure that they, the groupings are in the same way that you want them. For example, for some reason, PowerPoint did not group the letters in in together. So I had to do it myself by hitting control G and that way it is grouped. I can also group it with PowerPoint, so Control G, and there you go. This way it just makes the animation a lot easier, so that way I'm not having to put the animation on every single little stroke here. So just make sure that your grouping looks good. And as a final tip, do try to get it right in one take. So that might sound a little bit strange, especially since you have this handy little eraser tool that you can use to kind of perfect some of your strokes. However, sometimes you have a group that was saved as a kind of one object. So if I go to animations, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. These rays of light, if you hit replay, they'll all replay kind of clockwise since they're considered one ink object versus a group. Now what happens is if I wanna adjust any one of the rays kind of in the middle here and I go to draw and work with the eraser here, let's say I just kind of like move that down a little bit and this a little bit as well. Um, let's get rid of that. Now what's gonna happen is if I go to replay it's not gonna do them in the same way. 
So as you can see, the two strokes that I touched most recently, they get added in at the end. So you lose that kind of nice clockwise build that I had earlier. And there's no way that I know of to fix that. So even if it takes you multiple tries, I do recommend, especially when you're drawing something versus writing, that you get all the strokes in the order that you want to animate them because otherwise it could really mess things up for you. So those are just three tips that, that have really come out of my own experimentation with this so far. Definitely try it out for yourself and see what you can come up with. It's really fun to do. So thanks again for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe for more videos and see you for my next one.